You know, so every time when you're traveling, when you're in a hotel, and you got timeshare, and you're going in, you're enjoying your, your meals, the cafeteria part is very crucial. And the head chief, they got to understand, they got to fulfill them orders when the menus come in. Me rock with and introduce yourself. What's going on? This is the Samoan Sioux. Executive, executive Ooh, up in this mug. Ooh. My own hometown put me on Long Beach up in this mug. Ooh. Executive Sioux slash executive steward here Ooh. at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's kind of like a hard deal, a detail to be in because our people's not used to being in this type of capacity and right. they're serving Ooh. our city in this type of capacity. It took me 20 years to get to this level. Wow. I started off flipping burgers at mom and pop spots in Oklahoma City up until about a year ago. The pandemic, missing my family, all my loved ones passing. Wow. I knew I couldn't stay away from home for too long. I had to come back home. Wow. So when I came home, I started locking in jobs. And when this job called me, there was no way I was going to turn it down. Wow. To be an executive in your own hometown mm. is something to be proud of. And I'm proud that I came a long way. It took me 20 years to get to live three <laughs> lifetimes of careers. Three wow. careers. Wow. First as a boy band, singer of Rue Shade. Y'all know the song. Oh, oh, Y'all know the song. Y'all know the song. Leilani hit single from Rue Shade from back in late 90s, early up, and we, we finished touring around 2005. First career was that. Also bodyguarding on another supreme level detail with Melvin Child Presents. Right now we're about to film another movie out there in Atlanta and Alabama, so that is working on soon for the love of money it's out mm -hmm. on dvd on blu-ray right now go ahead and check it out if you ain't seen it mm -hmm. this is what it's about ladies and gentlemen being an executive where you from there's no better feeling than being a boss i'm getting tired of another cat putting me on schedule when i can put myself on schedule stick with what you love mm -hmm. stick with what you love and go hard at it don't ever stop doing it don't ever let the next man tell you you can't do it mm -hmm. don't ever let some in hollywood or in these record labels tell you that you can't make it, that your voice ain't good enough. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, that's what doomed me back in the day when these executives tell me that my voice was sleepy. Like I took it personal. I took it so personal, I quit the game. You know what I'm saying? And I should have never done, I should have never, I should have stuck to my grind and kept doing what I'm doing. But now that I know what that I know, they're gonna tell you the things that you don't wanna hear and you ain't gonna feel it. But that doesn't mean don't just to give up because the minute you give up, not only did you fail yourself, but you failed everybody else around you. And it took a long time for me to remember that. Actually, to know that I didn't just fail myself. I failed everybody around me that looked up to me, was depending on me to make it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Tell your audience and your fans the story about how, because I heard you were supposed to go to the military. And man, on that. yeah, I was supposed to go into the military, man. And I had uh, did my ASVAT, passed that thing, it was ready to go. On the eve of I was supposed to go swear in, this is for the Marines. I didn't pass it. I was about to be a... Yes, <laughs> you know, I was yeah. about to be all that. Yeah. But then on the eve of me going to swear in, I want to say a week prior to that, I met up with Diamond. Diamond was a, uh, AKA also known as the Night Nurse. You know what I'm saying? He was the executive producer of Rouché at that time. And um, I kind of, through my cousin, uh, my cousin Bam, who actually played the guitar on Lady Lonnie, he said, hey, this, this band is looking for another singer, man. You know, I know you got some pipes. Let me take you over to the Dimes house. So I was just like, you know what? I'm about to go to the Marines. So Bam's just like, you know what? Um, just let's go check him out. You might like it. And sure enough, I went and seen Diamond that day. He just got back from New York. He had did some things with, I'm, I'm thinking with uh, Death Row at that time. He just got working. I sang it right down the spot. He was like, oh, so you that singer? You let me hear, let me hear something. I hit that, that three o'clock in the heat of the night. You know what I'm saying? I did that for Don. And Dime, he was like, bro, let me, I'm gonna I'm get at you. You know what I mean? Dime was just so excited at that moment. But the very next day, I got a call. You know what I mean? I, I, this was, um, I got a call from my cousin, Bam. Bam was like, I gotta pick you up. I gotta take you over to Dime. He wanna talk to you. I get to Dime's house. They call me Magoo there. They had me a pager. This one, pagers was the deal. You know, everybody had a pager. <laughs> and my uh, diamond's like, here's that pager. When we call you, you and the band, man, when you when you hit that number, hit us back. And history was made after that, man. Next, you know, we was in the studio recording Leilani with Boomin. It was exciting to say the least. I heard you guys, uh, you you're, you just climbed on board with uh, some of the writers, some of the artists. What are some of the artists that you guys are working on now? Oh man. Right now, I know the boys, uh, the boys were stamina and Midnight Entertainment. They're busy working on Jasmine, which is an up and coming. She's a um, Hispanic, awesome singer. She comes along the lines of um, 
let's say her inspirations are like um, like Christina Milian, you know what I'm saying? Around, that's really young blood, awesome singer. And she's just an amazing singer. I can't wait for the world to hear what uh, Stam and Lemon has been hearing for the last few months that they've been working on the project. So yeah, that's one of the great artists that they got I'll working on right now. New work, right? Yeah, man. I just got done chefing. I just got oh, done chefing right. for this impressive part. It's like 2,000 people up in there. Not only not only for Jasmine, but I got the Uso Ra fam. Mm, the Uso nice. Ra fam, he about to drop some heat. You know what I'm saying? But we're, we're just continuously working and grinding. There's a lot of young blood out there that's looking for outlets to get in. You know what I mean? A lot of people got dreams, but they just got to get connected. They got to get plugged in to the right folks. And uh, luckily for myself, I know a lot of those right folks, you know, right here at Stamina. Part everybody's blessed, man. Everybody is too blessed to be stressed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it feels good to be right back here in Long Beach, California, hometown. Yeah. Working right, you know what I'm saying? An executive in my hometown, That's so it's right. a great feeling to be home. And the kids, how the kids doing? Kids is grown. Up. Kids is grown. They about yeah. to outgrow me. They wore my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But they're doing good. They That's doing right. good. Kids getting big. Uh, we're actually putting the second part of uh, "For the Love of Money" starring Cat Williams, Kerry Hilson. Uh, I want to say there's a bunch of other names involved at the moment, but it's too soon to, to really see the info on that. I tend to also. I'm working on a little startup for a little um, a non-profit right now for our Samoan communities. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, to, to open up new avenues for our the next generation, the avenues that we had and we squandered it away because mm -hmm. the older generations before us, all they know is that hard work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they taught us that hard work. Yeah, exactly. So now, now we gotta take that hard work where the mind meets. And I think it's our generation now. That's our responsibility mm -hmm. to get the next generation ready for those moves to be made. So I'm working on a nonprofit right now to get that up and rolling. It's called The Sewing. And uh, there's just a lot going on with The Sewing right now that I can't put out too much information on. But soon, mm -hmm. you're going to hear it soon. I've got, uh, I don't have too many regrets. I want to say one of my main regrets is, um, is stopping when they told me I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even my team. My team didn't even tell me that I wasn't good enough. It was other motherfuckers wow. that was telling that I wasn't good enough. So that was your downfall listening that was, to that them. That was my downfall right. listening to that type of right. criticism. My biggest regret was not, my biggest regret in that is I should have I should have knew better, but I didn't know I was too young. There was no other people like us at that time that wow. were doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's only a handful, um, there's only a handful that like at this moment, to mention them would be like an injustice. So I'm not even gonna mention their names. Yeah. But there's there's not that many before Ruche. There there's there were not too many boy bands. Boy bands. And when I say boy bands, I mean that with uh, much respect to like new kids on the block, Backstreet, Black Street, you know I'm Backstreet Boys, in sync. That's the era of music that Ruche was catering towards. So when they told this one little Uso from the hood that his voice wasn't good enough, I should have known and I regret listening to that criticism i should have known my my 44 year old now self knows now like nigga, you should have chucked that up and, and kept on going you yeah. know what i'm saying because if you're they're only catered for a certain right. demographic but our people's is everlasting our music is everlasting our music transcends boundaries mm. that's why leilani's still number one leilani's mm. still getting played mm. in all locations of the world y'all know that. And, that and that brings me to my next question like um like, can you elaborate on how, what type of music guy? Because everybody, look, everybody's into island reggae. They say island reggae is island reggae, but island reggae is like if you have a ukulele in there or a, a, a acoustic guitar. Explain what type of genre was Ruche really heading towards. You know what I'm saying? Ruche was, uh, we were actually, there wasn't no genre, genre that you could have put Ruche in. Right. Ruche was brand new, Ruche was fresh. Ruche was from the hood. Ruche was, there were islanders from the hood. We were a byproduct, second generation byproduct of islanders that migrated out of the islands to look for a better life. The American dream, that was the sound of Ruche was so, the American dream. So what dream. genre would you classify that? What I classify, I classify or? like island pop, contemporary. Right, contemporary. Because if you listen to the album now, the full length album is still out, it's still, it's not circulating right. as much as it did back in the day because we were doing straight out the trunk sales. That's right. You know what I mean? You could probably find a copy on eBay, you know what I'm saying? But um, if you look back and I listen to the album now, like I want to say generations beyond our time in music and that's all the right. credit. To Diamond, you know what I mean? Diamond from a city. He was one of the ones, the engineer, the architect of that sound. So yeah. For, for those, you, you, like y'all big fans, I know they all grown, 
but like even even the younger uh, generation are they're tapping into your music. Where can they find your music? Are you guys on social media? Um, I don't think uh, we don't personally. The group, the band itself, doesn't have a social media page, but I know we're all over YouTube. I know you can you can follow. You can find a type in Leilani slash Ruche Midnight Entertainment. Somewhat, it's there. It's there because I just seen it the other day. One of my little cousins was from 808 sent me like, "Hey, remember this? They still playing it on <laughs> yeah. the radio." Nah. You know what I'm saying? So it's still out there, still circulating. I, heard, on. I ain't heard the album, but I heard a lot about the album. What was the album entitled? What, what was the album's name? The first, uh, the first EP. It was a four track uh, EP called um, uh, "Slipping." Yeah, it was, it was yeah, Slipping. Yeah. That was the first That's the one EP. with Leilani on there, right? That was the one with, uh, with Leilani. Yeah. That was a maxi single with four songs on there. We had "Slipping," Leilani, the Leilani remix, and then I want to say a couple years later, because we ended up taking like a good two, three year tour of that maxi single. We were going to. Um, all our lives in San Jose, we was here in Utah, for everywhere where Polly's was, Hawaii. was getting together, Hawaii, the islands, and Tacona, everywhere where Polly's was gathering, we were there, Ruche was there, they requested Ruche, they were room and board us, all that. But um, to get back to the original question of the genre of music, I mean, me personally, like you shouldn't be boxing people into a certain genre of music. Mm. But, but all I know is that Ruche was one of the first when it comes to right. all these and boy bands. We I were one of the first. You guys are kind of like pioneering that type of music, like adult contemporary. Y'all was on like some Sade type of pop. Yeah. Now yeah. the only reason why they named y'all Island because you guys were hot, hot artists happened to be Samoan. Yeah. And then I heard the, the, it was the album. Pack. The album was called Drama, was, Drama was, in the Hotel. Drama Hotel. <laughs> yeah, it was called Drama in the Hotel. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Oh, man, is it the, really Drama in the Hotel? Yeah, I want to say. <laughs> I mean, from the from the conception of the album. I heard from the conception of the album, there was just so much drama surrounding the band itself. We say from the item original members of the band to management. I mean, just from everything that you hear now about the record labels problems. We, man, Midnight Entertainment was actually going through it. Uh, personnel issues, management issues, but the main, what, what I admire about the whole situation the most is that the core members, they've always stuck together. Mm. The core members continuously through all the adversity, they still stuck together. And that mm, for me, that's good. a testament to the hearts of those gentlemen that did. So, mm. drama in the hotel, years later. With years later, I spent, years later, I spent the last 20 years working in hotels. <laughs> Who would have yeah, known? Who would have known, right? For real, right? So, so uh, with the island reggae scene now, what do you think about it now? Oh like man, it's, it's so oh, big oh, now. Oh man, oh with the, man, with the island reggae festival. Oh what do man, you, what do you think? Can you chime in a little bit on that? Man, I'm telling you right now, with the with the current landscape of all poly artists, island music, island music in general, island people are doing music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta say it like that. It's freaking out. Oh, it's so crazy good. Uh, man, it's so banging. I mean, it is a big crowd now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Back then, there was on barely 50, barely, 100 exactly. people that show up to show. Exactly. Now it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands about to see around you. That's what these concerts look like now, which is a great thing. That's what we want to see. Me personally, I'm a big fan of all these artists that's mm. out now. Jay Boog, one of the top tier artists out there. Of course, Fiji. I believe Fiji is the greatest voice in our generation. Mm. And some would say that I'm wrong, but nah, nah, I put Fiji up against any person out there. Luther, if he was still alive, I think he'd probably blow him out the water. Man, that's just my, that's just my bias, the <laughs> opinion on that man. Hey, this Jizzle right here, this is my man right here, respect. Hey, outside from Jizzle, we got to <laughs> know. You know, man, this family right here. But man, during the course of me, you know, I did a little stretch. Right, right, and, right, right. Um, <laughs> sat down for a little. Hey, man, sat down for a decade. Right. Well, man, um, and while I was, you know, walking my little walk down, man, um, man, I was hearing some of your stuff up in there, man, and I, I, I would tell everybody, man, these my people right here, man. But nah, it really, it, hey. I have a bunch of questions, but I just want to praise you guys and glorify oh, bro, you guys, bro, man. Bro. You know, you, Diamond, and the rest of the squad, right, man. Right, right. You know, just to be Samoan. Man. And just to hear, like you said, thousands. And that's huge, man. You guys made an impact. You know, something that it, it's been a long time coming, man. I want to say, to some capacity, we're going to revisit some of those uh, slappers. There's a bunch of slappers nice. on Drama in the Hotel. 
I want to say it got it was a mild release. It got released uh, just to test the waters at that point. So I think to some capacity it will get revisited. But you know that's just something that we got in the bag right now. You know what I mean? Look for these other those other artists that I named earlier that I was talking about earlier. We're gonna try to mix that in with the old with the new. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing I know about music is it continuously goes around in circles. Like they're still sampling stuff from James Brown. They're right. still sampling stuff from Mike Jack. Everybody's getting sampled, so why not start sampling within our own community, right. our own music? Right. Five Stars got sampled by Fiji, and that one who's out there in the Bay, man, that mother slide, didn't it? Drew Deasy. Mm -hmm. Drew Deasy. Yeah. Shout out, Drew Deasy. Shout out, Big Homie. Think you need to elaborate for the fans? Okay. Like, when can they accept it on the, on, you know, to look out for it on the streaming service? That's, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Come to, come to think of it, I was thinking along the wrong capacity, but yeah. Uh, the actual album of Drum in the Hotel from Rouché will get revisited, remastered, and re-released to some degree at some point. Look out on your social media. You're gonna see all the updates here on Jizzle Knows. If anybody, if any, you're gonna get that information in any way, you're gonna get it right here. Anything coming from the Midnight Entertainment Camps of Old to Stamina Entertainment, you're gonna find out first right here at the Jizzle Knows. Mm -hmm. Enough said, yup, yup. Said better. So there it is, y'all heard it from the horse's mouth, Rockwell from Luche right yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? Check out some visiting. Hey, you got the convention center on. Not the convention, Lobby's convention center. So he's the chief head of uh, executive over here, chef, over here at the convention center. Uh, man, it's a beautiful day, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, you got any word, last words for your fans and or if people to, to watch out for or like whatever? Man, shout, out, shout out. out to all the family, shout out to all the fans across the globe. All my fans, all the fans from back in the day that support the Boucher from back in the day, I love y'all. None of that goes without oh, notice. Where's Yurm at? Yurm still around? Man, he around. He, creep, he <laughs> creeping on the come up like easy yeah, from the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate thanks for it. making appreciate time it, for us, bro. too, man. Appreciate it, Put this out to your fans, yeah. man. Appreciate Thank it, man. Hard for a bunch of celebrities. Yeah. I got to be one of the first boy band members, now I'm an executive.